Hello again, guys. Welcome back to Exalt Thy Horn. I hope you guys have been well, been strong, fighting the good fight of faith. Uh, I just wanted to come on tonight, guys, and just share a quick word. I actually have been preparing a message here, and um, with work and everything, it's been a little rough, but this is going to be more or less a pre um, a pre-start to the message um, that I'm going to be preaching. Um, I encourage you guys to tune in and listen to it. But <clears throat> I heard a girl's testimony tonight, somewhat of her testimony, and um, I sent her this verse. But this verse I, I wanted to share on the channel, guys, because um, there's so much power in this. In the book of Philippians, chapter one. The Apostle Paul writes in, in verse number 27, he says this, <clears throat> he says, only let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit. Remember, there's only one spirit, one baptism, one Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb. One God, amen. With one mind. Yes, we're different members. Yes, we all, the hand doesn't do the same thing that the foot does. The shoulder doesn't do the same thing that the leg does. But guys, we're all joined to the head. We all are joined to that same one mind. And that head came to give the Father's word, to serve us the Father's word, made himself a servant for all of us taking the form of a servant on, he says, humbling himself before the cross, having no reputation in this world. Let us not build our portfolios in this life, in this world, for this world is enmity with God. It has nothing of God. For we, we that are in Christ, we seek for a better kingdom, a country by faith and not by sight. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. With one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel. And not in any way terrified by your adversaries. In the book of 1 John, John is inspired to write that perfect love casts out all fear. Paul also writes to Timothy that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, peace, and of a sound mind. You know the foundation that we build upon is love. Paul writes that in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. That without love, without charity, we can have faith to move mountains. It, none of that's going to profit us anything without love. For God is love and Christ is the image of the living God. He's the Son of God. And we must build our foundation on that rock. That rock was Christ. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Sorry about this light, guys. One of the motion sensor lights. Amen. I'm thankful that I have some light out here. I just felt led to come out here on the back porch and share a quick word, guys. No way terrified by your adversaries, which is to them a proof of perdition. Hades, evil, the mark of the beast, 666, all those things, guys. But to you of salvation and that from God. Verse 29, for to you, for to you, you that are in Christ, yes, his beloved bride. Hallelujah. You that are holding fast to the head. You that are not conformed to this world no more. You that are crucified with Christ, as Paul writes in Galatians 2.20. Not frustrating the grace of God no more. Hallelujah. You that are walking in spirit, quenching the fiery dart to the devil, having on the breastplate of faith, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, overcoming evil with good, fighting the good fight of faith. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Yes, He's talking to you, His beloved bride, His chaste virgin. Hallelujah. To be strong and of a good courage, to fight the good fight, to endure to the end, to go through the fires, to stop the mouth of the lion. Like He writes in Hebrews 11, Paul says, and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Who is the lion? Satan, the adversary, the devil, the prince and power of this air, whose eternal destination is going to be where the worm never dies, where there's wailing and gnashing of teeth. But we that are in Christ, we that are in the spirit do not have to be a part of that. 
Choose this day whom you shall serve. Today is the day of salvation. Overcome. Be an overcomer. Be redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Crucify the flesh with all of its passions, all of its lusts, all of its desires. That's what's happened. The brokenness, the brokenness, the hurting, the pain that you're feeling. Yes, there's travail. There's always travail when there's a, a woman getting ready to give birth. But after she gives birth, there's joy. There's joy, hallelujah, to the Lamb of God. Nothing can separate you from the love of Christ. For to you, you, yes, you, hallelujah, it has been granted all the promises that God has made with the seed of Abraham, that seed of Isaac. For we are not the seed of Ishmael no more. No, we have crucified the flesh. And we're walking in the Spirit, mortifying the flesh with the Spirit. Hallelujah. Yes, you. It has been granted on behalf of Christ. Not only to believe in Him. But also to suffer for His sake. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Communing with Christ. Eating of His flesh. Drinking of His blood. The suffering. It's your seal. Hallelujah to the Lamb. For just as they afflicted Him, they will also afflict you. Having the same conflict. Remember, Christ is living through you. And if Christ is living through you, you've made yourself a living sacrifice to God. And He's living through you. And if they, if they didn't receive His words back then, he said they're not going to receive them today. If they did it to me, they will do it to you. Having the same conflict which you saw in me, and now here is in me. You know, Paul's writing this in bonds and chains and prison for the testimony of Jesus Christ, for preaching that Christ is living through him. And it's not he that lives, but it's Christ that lives in him. For he lives by faith in the Son of God who loved him and gave himself for him. And what happened? Well, he was put in chains, he was beaten with many stripes. He went through many, many sufferings and persecutions. But he was called to go through those things as Ananias had laid hands upon him. Moses also chose to neglect Egypt and to suffer. For it would be better to suffer than to reap all the pleasures of Egypt. Hebrews 11. For you read about many of our sisters and our brothers that walked by faith that lived by faith, that trusted in God, and that believed in God, and it was counted to them for righteousness. Blessed is the man that God does not. Blessed, blessed is the man that God imputes righteousness to, as it, as it says, as David writes, hallelujah to the Lamb. That's the conflict. Hallelujah. Therefore, if there's any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, this is chapter 2, verse 1. If any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded. He continues, he continues by being like-minded, same mind, like-minded. Having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. In the book of Acts, they came together in one accord, in one mind. Giving all that they had, knowing that everything that they had in this life meant nothing to them if they didn't have Christ. For Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than himself. Hallelujah. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ and God. Colossians 3.3 3. And when you die, guess what? The things of this world, they don't bother you like they used to. The only reason that they truly, truly hurt you is because you know that all the afflictions are from the devil and all you want to do is pray for those people. You just want to see those people come out of it and be saved and be a part of the body of Christ because you know the joy that you have. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests but also for the interests of others. Christ came to serve. He came to be a light to us. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And he told us to let our light shine. He wants to live in you. He, that, that's his, his desire. He wants to become one. 
the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit. We have the mind of Christ. He that is in us is greater than he that is in the world. Guys, the time is now. Turn your TV on for just a little bit. And you can see it. The coming of the Son of Man is approaching so rapidly and so quick, quickly. I don't know how much time that we have left, but I can tell you that just as it's nighttime out right now, the same that I can also tell you that Jesus is coming very, very quickly. He's coming to gather a pure bride. He said, blessed are the pure in heart. Remember, guys, that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And God said, if you defile your body, then he will destroy that individual. What is he saying? To repent, to turn from your iniquity and from your sin. To not receive the grace of God in vain and come out of her, my people. And he says, I will receive you as sons and daughters. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. We must be born again. We must put on that incorruption. We must inherit that incorruptible seed, that good seed that falls on good ground. Trusting and obeying because there's no other way, hallelujah, to the Lamb. Yes, Christ must live in us. We must walk as Christ walk. We must have the mind of Christ. We must do, be doers of the word and do his commands. What's he, what did he say? To love God and to love your neighbor as yourself. And love does no ill to his neighbor. Love is the fulfillment of the law. Because when you're walking in the Spirit, all the fruits of the Spirit are goodness, kindness, peace, gentleness, long-suffering, patience, meekness. There's no law against those things. And that's why those that are in the Spirit are not under condemnation. They're not under the law. For we that are in Christ are no longer under condemnation, but we've been set free by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Yes, we've been washed in His blood. We've been cleansed by His blood. We become living sacrifices. And we now have one mind and one accord. Believing in Him by faith. And also walking through this life and suffering. And that's what you're feeling. That's what I feel. And that's what all the body of Christ has felt. For they all suffered. Just as Christ suffered. But I can assure you. Every one of their tears, God's bottled up. He hasn't forgotten any tears. For all things are naked unto the Lord. He's put them in Abraham's bosom. And just like the rich man and Lazarus, Lazarus was comforted. And the rich man was in torments. Though the rich man had all of the pleasures that he wanted in this life. And poor Lazarus was begging just for crumbs. But now things are different. Trust in the Son of God who loved you and gave himself for you. Do you love him? Ask yourself, do you love him? Pick up the phone. He's given you gifts. He's given you a calling. He's given me that as well. He's given all of his children gifts. He's a gracious and merciful king. Hallelujah. King of kings and Lord of lords. And he wants you to use the gift. To pour out what grace and mercy is. To season all things with grace. That's the salt. You know, without that salt, it's trampled on by men and tossed and thrown out. It's time. If you've been cut off that vine, you know in your heart. You know if you have a personal relationship with the Son of God. The Bible says where sin abounds, grace abounds more. Paul said in Romans 6, 1, Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? If you have sin in your life, if there's sin in your heart, Grace can't abound, guys. You have to come to the truth. Only the truth can set you free. And Jesus came to speak the truth. 
He said, I didn't come to bring peace, but a sword. Well, that sword was the truth of God that can save your soul for eternity. You can't have sin and grace at the same time. You must turn from your wickedness. You must repent from your iniquities, for your body is the temple. And God said He'll take that old heart out and He'll put a new heart in. They write His laws upon your heart. Yes, guys. Grace isn't even alive in your life if you still have sin. For you've cast your great pearl before swine if you've received the grace of God before. You've been like the dog that's went back to his own vomit. And I've been there, guys. I know what that's like. It's a horrible, miserable, poor, blind, and naked experience. It's a Laodicean experience. Don't lie to yourself, though. A righteous man falls seven times, but he gets up. And when he gets up, he puts his hand back to the truth. And he says that I'm not going back. I am going to listen to the Lord Jesus. I am going to remember Lot's wife. I am going to put my hand to the plow. Because no man looking back is fit for the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said in Luke chapter 9, the very last verse. They put their hand to the truth. See, they didn't fall and they didn't receive the grace of God in vain after they fell. But they fell. Usually they fall because they listen to teachers that tingle and itch their ears. Anything that's pleasing to the flesh is not pleasing to God. If it sounds good to the flesh, you need to run for your life, your spiritual life, your eternal life. Amen. He came to give you life more abundantly. But a lot of people don't understand what that truly means. Because they think that means to reap all the blessings in the flesh. Now God can bless you with things in this flesh, things in this life. But put first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Put that first. Seek God every day. And you know what? Your flesh won't even run to the things that you used to run to anymore. All you'll desire to do is just be in the secret closet. Your whole day at work, you're just desiring to go home so you can get in the secret closet. Your whole day, you're just waiting to hear that prayer. Or waiting to see if somebody's going to open their heart up to the truth. Don't force it. You'll know if somebody wants to talk to you about it or not. That's an open heart. It's a heart that's willing. But when the open door's there... And season it with salt. Because the grace of God can save that individual. Love's the key. And if you love them, don't tell them they're, they're okay in their sinful state. That's not what God called you to do. Don't tell them that you can't stop sinning either. I just want to clarify this and say this. Any man that tells you after you've been baptized into his death, Romans 6, you've been baptized into his death and you've received grace and then after you have received grace that you can never stop sinning, run for your life. That man is an accursed child according to the book of Galatians chapter 1. Paul says it twice. That is not the gospel of Jesus Christ, nor will it ever be. Matter of fact, that's the gospel of death. And no marvel for Satan transforms himself as a minister of of righteousness. He's an angel of light disguising himself as a wolf in sheep's clothing. He's going to speak with you. He's going he's going to try subtly, very craftily and cunningly to get you to think that you can still reap all the pleasures of heaven and keep your sin. That is a lie. That is a lie, guys. God means what he says about sin. Yes, he does. Understand and know that the wages of sin is still death, guys. Just because we're under new covenant in the New Testament does not mean that the God that said I am that I am and said that I, did, I, I do not change for I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. He meant what he said about sin and about iniquity. For his people will be a holy people circumcised in heart, in spirit. Hallelujah. Not circumcised in the flesh. That'll profit you nothing. Circumcised in heart. Amen. He means what he says, guys. A watchman will tell you the truth.
because they love you and they want to see your soul in heaven with them forever. They're worried about your soul. And they don't please man, but they please God. Amen. The truth is the only thing that can set you free. Anybody telling you after you've been baptized. You know, baptism means you've been baptized into his death. But those of us that are baptized into his death are now risen with him. As death could not hold him down, death can also not hold us down. For we are in Christ. That's what baptism means. It's exactly what it means, guys. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ and God. If you died, when you died, the sin died with it. The old man is dead. Behold, all things are new in Christ. They're not new so that you can go back to the old. Grace was not meant for you to go back to the old whenever you please. But grace was to live new in Christ all the days of your life. And that's why Jesus said, No man looking back and putting their hand to the plow is fit for the kingdom of heaven. Because he's called you to walk in grace. He wants to walk through you. And if he's the truth, the truth must be in you. Not sin, not iniquity, not the old man. For the old man was death. The old man was under the law. The old man was condemned. All of us were condemned for all had sinned. We had to be born again. The precious blood of Christ had to enter into us. We have to allow him to live through us as living sacrifices, pleasing and holy unto God. Be ye holy as your Father in heaven is holy. All those things were taught by the Son of God, the Lamb of God. Let us take heed to the good shepherd's voice. Let us hear him as he says in John chapter 10. My sheep hear my voice. A stranger they will not follow. A man that tells you after you've been saved. You've received the grace of God. Not in vain. Uh, after you have grace. And tell you that you can never stop sinning. After you've received grace as a liar. And the truth is not in him. That is the spirit of error. That man is unstable. He's double-minded in all of his ways, the book of James says. Don't listen to that man. He's a stumbling block to your salvation. And if you follow him, you're going to fall into the ditch. I beg you and I plead with you, brethren and sisters, flee from those wolves. They're a cancer to your soul. Don't follow them. The time is too nigh. You have to come out from amongst those people and be separate, saith the Lord. Anybody to tell you those things is a liar. The truth is not in them. He that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. Not just some days and then other days it's not. It's all the days of your life. God's called you to become a living sacrifice, to lay it down. The old man's got to die. Death. He doesn't come back alive when he's dead. The new man now lives in Christ Jesus. Christ lives through him, through the power of God. It's not I that do it. With man it's impossible, and with God all things are possible. John the Baptist said, I must decrease, and Jesus Christ, he, the Lord, must increase. What does all that mean? Because I'm dead. The flesh is dead. I'm nothing. I'm the dust. That's what it means. But I've handed my life over to the living God who loved me, died for me, and he gave himself for me. Hallelujah to the Lamb. If I can do all things through Christ, who strengthens me? I can do all things through Christ. Glory to God. You can too. I'm not special. In God's eyes, I am. And so are you. But God has no respect to purses is what I'm saying, guys. If Moses and Elijah and Peter, James and John, everybody wants to bring up Peter and how he denied the Lord. And he did fall. But he got back up. And he put his hand to the truth. And the truth set him free. And he went on to be a great apostle. Doing signs and wonders. Going into prison for the Lord. Going through suffering. Just as it said in the book of Philippians. Same as Paul. Guys. For all of them sinned. But all of them got, uh, got up in grace. And all of them walked in the truth the rest of the days of their life. Don't listen to those people. Your flesh wants to hear exactly what they're telling you. That you can never stop sinning. That's exactly what the flesh's desire is to hear. 
It's appeasing, it's appealing to the flesh, but I can assure you it's death. The Lord never spoke that. Matter of fact, Jesus said to go as the woman that committed adultery to go and sin no more. That's exactly what He told her, guys. You've received grace. Now walk in this grace. You've been given the empowerment of grace. Where's your condemners at? They're gone, Lord. I don't condemn you either. Go and sin no more. See, there's no condemnation in those that are in Christ. The woman that committed adultery, guess what? Romans chapter 8 says the same thing. Where's your condemner? There's God. Now your condemners are always going to be here, still trying to bring you back into the world, trying to bring your old sins up, trying to bring up the past and who the old man was. But remember, God's going to put a sock in their mouth. Maybe in this life, maybe not. But I can assure you, the rich man is still begging. He's still begging for one drop. To cool the tip of his tongue. Amen. It's not worth it, guys. It's not worth it. He wants to receive you as a child. He loves you. He demonstrated that love at the cross by giving his life. There's no greater way that he could show his love than dying for you and I. Now, let us show our love to him. Amen. Faith without works is dead. Bible makes that clear. How can you say you believe, but you still live in all the passions of your flesh? For you don't believe. You receive grace in vain. Awake to righteousness and stop the iniquity. Stop the sin. That's what Paul wrote. How could he say that? And he was going back to sin every other week. I just don't think that would be possible, guys. For God's not the author of confusion. He's not double-minded. God means what He says about sin. And He's given us the Holy Spirit. He's given us the power of the Comforter. Now we are to grow in grace. But if we're living in grace, sin no longer has power over us. We're not going back to our sin because the Holy One of Israel is living in us. Your flesh wants to go back. Yes, you're still in this mortal body. But we that are in the Spirit mortify that mortal body, the flesh, with the Spirit, Christ. Glory to God. I know I'm rambling. I know I'm going on. I just have a passion because I hear so many of these false teachers trying to ruin people, trying to get them to receive the lie, and the majority of the people are running to it. And it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. And that's what they want to hear. None of us are perfect. None of us are perfect. But I'm not saying that I'm growing in grace. But I can't be in grace if I'm in my sins again. I can't. I can't. To grow in grace means I'm growing in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus through the circumstances that I walk through all the days of my life. I'm knowing how to handle different circumstances. I know how to abound. I know how to be abased. All those things. I'm growing. I'm desiring, I'm thirsting and hungering, I'm eating meat, I'm growing in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus. But I'm not turning back to sin unto death. I'm not committing willful sin, for if I commit willful sin, and there is no more grace, there's no more sacrifice for my sin. But I've taken the great pearl of price and I've thrown it back unto the pigs. In other words, my name's been written out of the Lamb's Book of Life. And that's not mine, anybody that does those things. I've been under that circumstance. It's a horrible feeling, guys. Don't go there. Receive the truth. Walk in the truth. There's going to be hard days. There's going to be easy days. You're going to go in, You're going to have all these different feelings, guys. You're going to question yourself. That's Satan trying to get you. Nobody's cut. Nobody's going with you. Look at the broad, wide way. How much? Look at look at the spirit on that. Man, it looks so great. It's death. It's death because their message keeps your sin alive. Keeps your flesh at peace when there is no peace. I have a message I'm going to be preaching out of Ezekiel here shortly. I'm also going to be preaching out of Philippians 2. Um, I encourage you guys, please, uh, please. Take heed to the good shepherd's voice. I'm just a vessel. 
I'm just... crying in the wilderness, telling the people to repent and turn, not receive the grace of God in vain. I will be preaching a message soon, guys. I didn't intend on this to go this long. It's the preacher in me. I'm long-winded. I can't help it. I just have a passion for the people. I'm zealous for the Lord in a good way, guys, in a spiritual way. I, I, I just, I, I've heard so much of these false teachers, and it, it, there's nothing that it frustrates me so much. But I know that my hope, my patience, I, I just, I pray that God gives me more patience. Um, To just endure, my, to be patient and wait upon the Lord. Like Stephen, I see my Lord sitting at the right hand of the Father. Now remember guys, he was talking to a stiff-necked, uncircumcised in heart people. Religious people would not receive the grace of God. Be strong. Trust. Have faith. God is with us to deliver us. Let us pray for the body of Christ through all of our afflictions and sufferings that we grow stronger in faith. May the power of God rest upon us. I love you guys. God bless.